Yeah, so if it's okay for you, I have a series of questions, some really sure, general sure. questions, another from my from the students. Okay? Sure, sure. So, considering sir, we, we are talking to Western students, and as you know, in the West, most of the times, yoga is linked directly to asanas and body postures. Yes. And in the West, most of the time, a great yogi is someone who can do the strangest asana, you know, and the most complicated <laughs> asana. Yeah, yeah. So, even if we discuss this in the course, it would be great if we can hear from you. What is yoga and what is a yogi looking for? Right. So it's true that yoga asanas, because they have become very popular in the West because of some teachers, many teachers who have gone from India and started their yoga teaching. Well, the thing is that while yoga asanas are okay and good and so on and so forth, good for health and so on, good for keeping in shape, keeping fit, but they're only one small part of the whole philosophy of yoga. The yoga is much more than standing on your head. Well, it's okay if you stand on your head and don't <laughs> slip and fall down. But uh, yoga is much more than twisting your body into different shapes. Some I thought the other day somebody was doing yoga since he twisted his body almost like a you know, that thing we use to open wine, uh, corkscrew. Yeah, the corkscrew, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> mm, so, it's, it, so yoga is just not asana. So where does asana come into this yoga theme? Well, the yoga is called the yoga of uh, eight limbs or eight parts. Nowhere in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, which is the standard textbook on yoga, and probably the oldest, anywhere Patanjali calls it Ashtanga Yoga. He does not. He calls it Kriya Yoga, actually. If you go to the ch first chapter, is called Samadhi Pada. Then you go to the next chapter called Sadhana Pada, which means there you practice. It begins by saying that this is Kriya Yoga, which I am teaching you. Mm. Which means what? Doesn't mean a brand of Kriya Yoga. It means yoga of practice. Kriya means practice, Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. So nowhere he mentions Ashtanga Yoga, but it so happens after saying that, he says that it has eight parts. Ashta Anga. Ashta is eight. Uh, starting with Yama, Niyama, which are rules and regulations to be followed by the yogi. Then, then comes Yama Niyama, then Asana, third, postures, Asana. Then Pranayama, the breathing and controlling of Prana. Then uh, Pratyahara, the capacity to withdraw the mind at any given moment. Uh, dharana, the capacity to fix your attention one-pointedly on anything. Uh, dhyana when that one-pointedness continues uninterrupted for a long time, samadhi, the culmination, where the meditation is so deep that the meditator himself disappears. There is only meditation. So then what happens because of that? The first chapter, when Patanjali begins yoga, he says, atha yoga anushasanam. This is the beginning of the teaching of yoga. And the next sentence is, Yoga is chitta vritti nirodha, which means yoga is the practice and the teaching by which the distractions and conflicts of the mind are annihilated, put to rest. This is the aim of yoga. Okay, so what happens when there is no tension, when there is no distraction, when the mind becomes quiet and one-pointed? then it's able to gather infinite energies, which we normally cannot do, a distracted mind cannot do. And therefore a yogi is respected because he's supposed to have capacities and energies which are normally not available to the person whose chitta, which is mind, is full of vrittis, distractions. This is the aim of yoga. So while asanas are a part of it, so happens, not only in the West, but also in India, people give more stress on the asanas because they are easier to do 
then go through the whole thing of practicing yoga, achieving samadhi and so on and so on. So this is where yoga asanas tend. I also do asanas, you know that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not saying that only asanas is yoga. There's much more to it. Yeah, great. Sir, and th th there is also connecting with this. There is also a kind of conception, I think, in the West, not by all people, but I think a lot of people that the yoga is kind of someone dressing white, chanting on mm -hmm. with his mind in the cloud somewhere, unable to do any practical work. Uh, so, I mean, what would be the qualities of someone who has achieved that? Can, how does he interact with, with reality? Could he, for example, run a business? Could he do something, I don't know, some, have some impact yeah. in the material and practical world? Look, the kind of description you give, gave for a yogi when we started just now, This is like a description of a drug addict to me, <laughs> not like a new kid. <laughs> But people somehow, some people think... Yeah. After, <laughs> two or three like puffs, after two or three puffs of cannabis, which in <laughs> India is called ganja, and their heads are in the clouds, they think they are... This is only okay. addiction, there is nothing like that. Okay. Hmm. Now, how do you understand it? Look, I am sitting here for an interview with you. Hmm. I'm wearing a t-shirt, I'm not wearing a white robe. <laughs> But first of all, to climb the steps of the library, if I'm wearing a big robe, I might fall down, trip and fall down. Okay. So, clothes are not important for a yogi. How you dress? Of course, the Western concept of a formal dress where you put a hangman's knot in the neck and tighten it, it's go is bad for yogis, I understand. <laughs> so, because you can't breathe properly. <laughs> But... <laughs> And all, everybody, from the president to down, everybody, when it's a formal dress, you have this thing hanging here. Uh, in India, we have a cloth hanging, it's usually under the waist to tie up. It's called a cow teen, no, Indian tie. So, uh, that's not a good dress for us, for yogis. However, to wear any comfortable dress, which is comfortable. See, I'm wearing this, it's summer in Madhrapalli, you know that. So I'm wearing a t-shirt so that there is more air, it's more informal. And also for people, the only thing that is a little peculiar in my picture is this little thing here. But that is, a, that is just a style, it doesn't mean anything. Okay? Now, please understand that the yogi's mind is not in the clouds. A yogi is one... During practice, sometimes during solitude and when you're quiet, you need to... Uh, sometimes keep quiet and meditate and all that. But consider that as a preparation. It's more like, you know the silkworm? Yeah. You've yeah. heard of the silkworm? Yeah. It's a lowly little worm which is eating mulberry and hanging around. Ugly looking stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it decides to build a cocoon around it. Hmm? So it builds yeah. a cocoon. And then it's in the darkness of the cocoon for some time. In that stage, a yogi requires perhaps to go away in isolation, in solitude, prepare, practice. Even executives do that. After a year of hard work, they like to go yeah. to a resort. Of course, yeah. there is uh, hardly any uh, isolation there because usually girlfriends are there and bottles. <laughs> so it, anyway, but they want to move away from the sea, right? <laughs> So, in the same way, <laughs> when you move away from active work, you might need to have that. And then what happens when the silkworm sits inside the cocoon? It develops wings. It can no longer sit mm -hmm. in the cocoon. Then it breaks the cocoon, it comes out. It's a moth or a mm -hmm. butterfly flying in the air, in the sky and looking down upon the earth. It has changed from a worm to that. Mm -hmm. So, once it has become a butterfly, It doesn't need to sit in a cocoon. It should be out. It should be searching which flowers give more honey, which flowers are looking good. So, a yogi who has attained stability of mind, when the distractions are removed, the mind becomes very stable. And he has found peace in himself. Such a mind is full of energy. It's very active. No energy is dissipated. So, you can always take that energy and find a way out, which is very creative, and work. Business is not only about making money. 
if you think you want to need a business which will be good for others in the process if there is money there is no harm a yogi is not averse to that don't think that a yogi is a sanyasin these are two things a uh, renunciant who is not interested in the world and who becomes a monk is one side of the story a yogi need not be a monk most of the yogis actually are not monks they are householders they're married they have children but they may not they can also remain without getting married but they need not become monks and they can do any work that they take up except that the work that they do will not be so self centered it will be more for the benefit of others now even though businesses are partic- generally self centered when they advertise it appears as if it is good for the public <laughs> honestly it's not <laughs> it's really selling okay so a yogi knowing this can indulge in any of these activities provided the activities don't pull him down from the tranquility of mind which is in hmm. there are some activity like he cannot i have become a yogi after that i cannot become a highway robber this is hmm. not possible but there are many other civilized things that one can do in fact you can do it more efficiently than a non yogi mm. because right. why you have learned the secret of one point in this mm. mm. yeah and here, here is where i link to the other topic we wanted to discuss that is related to let's think about the people who are listening to this and who took the course most of them we could say are middle class hard working people who have hardly any free time even with the current situation of lockdown most of the people i know they are working from home struggling with meetings uh, teaching their children because they don't go to school yeah. doing the household activities because nobody is there to help because of the lock maybe they are even more busy and stressed now so people like this to be able to take at least a little bit of their day to do yoga practice they they must really feel the motivation and understand how is that relevant to me i mean wh- why should i set up i mean could you tell us a bit little bit about how could yoga be relevant to such people i mean first you're shut in you're not going mm. out let's look at the mm. physical part right mm. so definitely the body needs some exercise my understanding is doing yoga asanas and pranayam is much better exercise than lifting weights mm. body keeps fit mind keeps fit the whole system because yoga asanas are not only physical exercises they also have deal with the hormones the the ductless glands starting from the pituitary down which control the moods and functions of the body can all be activated in the reverse manner by the mind uh, to the practice of yoga Inclu- even the asanas so while you are in a shutdown especially it's a good thing to set apart some time where you can do your asanas which is there be good for your body and good for your mind then it would be a nice idea also to go out for a walk not in a group but alone enjoy the fresh air the trees the sea and so on and once you are near the sea i don't know where if you have sea in your place i don't know yeah yeah, I like have, it, huh? yeah yeah go and sit there and meditate look at the sky sea and meditate ah huh? uh, where are you now barcelona i mean barcelona ah, barcelona famous go and sit uh, avoid too much noon day siestas but go and sit in <laughs> front of the sea and close your eyes and meditate mm? that meditation the asana will help you with the physical the meditation will help you with the mind so you don't get frustrated and depressed that you can do all the work that you're doing anyway it's online yeah mm. and there is no boss sitting out there so you can always stop where you want go and do some exercises <laughs> asana come back me who is going to see so all this can be done if you ask me what are you doing in the shutdown i sit down and do like i'm talking to you i do a lot of useful work 
Now, when I'm alone in my room, now this is not to be imitated by anybody. I take off all my clothes and I just <laughs> hang around because you can't do that outside, right? And it is summer, you get a whole body aired. Huh. Yes. Yeah, don't, this is not for teaching, I'm just saying. My <laughs> not for online teaching. <laughs> no, no, it's for a, it's a personal idiosyncrasy. So. <laughs> so there are various things you can do. You don't have to take off your clothes, but you can walk around. You, can, you see, what I'm trying to say is don't let a situation affect your mind. Your mind should be able to tackle any kind of situation. I mean, this is yoga. If you cannot do it, then you're not a yogi. You may be mm. doing sirsasana for 10 minutes a day. Please don't do more than 10 minutes a day. It will cause a hemorrhage of the brain because all the blood will be flowing down. But mm. even if you do that, you're not a yogi unless under any circumstance you're able to remain tranquil mm. and work efficiently. Very important. Hmm. In fact, the Gita says a man who works efficiently with complete attention is a yogi. He's called a karma yogi. Hmm. Hmm. Sir, and um, suppose there could be the students that took the course or any, any person who learns some pranayama techniques, some meditation techniques, asana technique, and manages to set up some part of the day for that. I mean, is that enough to advance in the, in the path towards the, the, the goal that the, the yogi is seeking? Or what would you tell those people who learn some, a few techniques, start practice? Can they move forward just with that? Or yes. What it, else is needed? I would say it's a good beginning. Hmm. It's a good beginning. Once hmm. they have started off and they're feeling good, and if they want to explore more, into the advanced aspects of yoga and become from a limited human being to a little more expanded multidimensional being, then while doing these practices, they should start reading uh, the textbooks which are available traditionally. Don't read any of the newfangled teachings by all kinds of guys nowadays, there are all kinds of turban guys, bearded guys, bald, bald headed guys, everybody's teach. Don't get into that. But first, do simple yoga. And then read the traditional textbooks. I suggest first, there are good translations available of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. One. There is a classic textbook on the practice of yoga called um, Yoga Pradipika. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's also called Hatha Yoga Pradipika, doesn't matter, called Yoga Pradipika. Uh, then there is Serpent Power. Mm -hmm. So these are the textbooks which will help you to expand your theoretical horizon. And then when you say, okay, now I have some idea of how to advance more, then you find someone who knows and who can teach this. Not before that. Hmm. Then from yes. there you slowly... And please remember there are no shortcuts in this matter. Yes. You have to work on it patiently till you attain that kind of state where you are not a conditioned human being but something much more than that. Yes. Yes. Is what I would yes. suggest for Great. Uh, as, as you mentioned, there are so many, especially nowadays with this online uh, thing, there is so much, for someone who wants to start, there is so much offering. In fact, uh, when I was starting with this course, I asked a few good friends to help me to promote it. And I contacted a good friend who lives in Argentina, in the center of the country. There is a beautiful area with hills, forests. He lives in a small village. Uh, and I asked for his help, and he tells me, look, uh, because you are my good friend, I will help you promoting the, the, the course, but in the village I, I live, everyone is a yoga teacher, so I don't think <laughs> they would be interested in, in a beginner's course. <laughs> so the situation seems to be that we might be heading to a situation where there are more yoga teachers in the world than students, so You're right. for someone who is starting, there is so much offering. Uh, how how could you guide someone to, to choose and okay what, what 
what course on yoga do I follow? What kind of yoga? What you know? This is difficult to say. I don't know what people mm. are offering. You know. Mm. Uh, mm. But if anybody promises that you will become a perfect yogi with all the yoga powers in yogic powers in six months, run away. You're wasting your time. <laughs> you're wasting your money. <laughs> so, because this is a long term. People have been doing practicing yoga especially in some other places in the Himalayas, in India, mm. and also in the South, for years before some change takes place. So if you're mm. aiming for that, then don't take anything that gives shortcuts, anything that is like a mall where you can go and pick up from the cupboard, from the shelf, and anything which is charging too high fees. Mm. It should be moderate. Because when you see too much big fees, that means the guy is greedy to make money. He cannot be a yogi. Mm. Yeah. Yoga also, there's a principle. When you give, then you have to take something from them. This is kind of a bond that between the teacher and the student. Mm. And also, watch out if the person is depending on traditional yoga textbooks or he is newfangled in his own way. Somebody is yeah. practicing yoga in a closed room with the heater on and sweating all the time. This is not yoga. Bikram yeah. yoga, something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to use his name. He'll go and file a suit against me. So, <laughs> <laughs> but there are no such things. In this is a completely newfangled arrangement, which is okay for the Westerners, but it doesn't mean anything. Mm -hmm. So you have to watch on that carefully. These are some of the points that you have to watch. But I would still say that if you're genuinely teaching yoga and if you can set up a place for yourself, like you said, in the village, very soon those frauds will fall off and you will win. <laughs> but you should have the grounding on it. If they say something, you must have enough traditional knowledge to say, hey, 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 hey one minute, this is not the right thing. <laughs> that you should have, that capacity. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Understand. Understand. And um, another question I face very often here is uh, when people learn you are practicing yoga or you are teaching yoga, the first question is what kind of yoga is it? Like, you know, the, the, a label has to be attached. And most of the time, the question is expecting a, the kind of yoga people have in mind here mm -hmm. are related to different styles of practicing asanas yeah. that have been known that teachers have become famous. For example, mm -hmm. there are some teachers or schools that are very famous for precisions in asanas, uh, alignments, other for doing dynamic asanas. May I say something? It's always, it, yeah. Maybe somebody from Mysore called uh, the Mysore School of Yoga. They are the people mm -hmm. who are like that generally. Mm -hmm. uh, Patabi Jawish. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. See, well, let me explain this to you that uh, yoga and asanas have been there for hundreds of years in this country. Mm. In between, some people took it up and popularized it. There was a teacher who was the, uh, uh, who was part of the Mysore Maharaja's uh, palace court. They call it Astan Vidwan, one who works mm. in the palace, called Krishna Machari. Krishna Machari, uh, was a very good yogic practitioner of asanas and pranayams, all that is true. But he was also doing gymnastics you know, with ropes and all that. Mm. So he incorporated some of those things also into yoga and uh, made so many asanas which are strictly, you cannot say asanas, are mixed up with various factors and so mm -hmm. on. But he was a good yoga teacher. And then from him, two schools started. One school was his own son-in-law, as well as his nephew, B.E.K.S. Iyengar, uh, began to teach in the West. This is the yoga that is very popular, B.K.S. Iyengar, Sashtra. Uh, however, Krishnamacharya also had an independent man who was not part of his family called Patavijoyesh. So he started his own school in Mysore and their rivals. Mm. 
I remember meeting Vatabi Joyce once, long ago, and uh, asking him, uh, and Vatabi was a foreign American girl, so she said, I have already learned uh, Ashtanga Yoga. So he said, who taught you? So she said, BKS. BKS who? He said, <laughs> <laughs> so you see the rival. Now this is not yoga. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so there is the Patavi Joy School. There is the uh, VKS Iyengar School. Uh, Krishna Macharya's son Deshikachar himself was a yoga teacher. He has a school in Chennai. Hmm. Good yoga. Good. So there are many schools of yoga. So if somebody asks you what school are you from, you can say that this was taught to me by M, CM, whose school is from Maheshwaranath Babaji and Sri Guru Babaji. So it's part of the Kriya Yoga school. And if they say is Kriya Yoga important for yoga, you take the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, go to the chapter on Sadhana Pada and read the first sentence saying this is Kriya Yoga. So this is the school we are from. You can also say it is a Himalayan school because it is linked to the Himalayas. Mm. You can also say that it is linked to the Nath Sampradaya, uh, which is an ancient yoga school, the Nath Sampradaya. And uh, the, one of the most famous textbooks on yoga, apart from the Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, is the Yoga Pradipika, which is written by Swaatma Rama, who is also from the Nata Sampradaya, from the Nath mm. school. Mm. So you have a lot of authentication. You don't have to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I just says, is yoga M the yoga taught my by No, the so then That's they it. won't know. They won't know. So you tell him M M is connected to another M, Maheshwarnath Babaji, who comes from the Nath Sampradaya. Mm. It's the Nath Sampradaya who actually protected yoga and allowed it to grow when it was about to disappear. And the yoga, Hatha Yoga Pradipika, the masterpiece is written by Swatma Rama, who is also a Nath Paddhi. Mm. Uh, and the school is the school of Kriya Yoga. Mm. And if you say, why Kriya Yoga has anything to do with asanas, say this is exactly what Patanjali, the teacher of yoga says in the chapter that begins the teaching of yoga. Mm. Sadhana. Mm. In fact, one, one of the students was asking if you have any link with uh, Paramahansa Yogananda uh, teachings, uh, he was interested to, to know that. I, ha I have no direct links with Paramahansa Yogananda's Kriya Yoga teachings, but they come roughly from the same source. Hmm. Because his teacher, Yukteswar Maharaj, was a disciple of Lahiri Mahasaya, and Lahiri Mahasaya was a disciple of Sri Guru Babaji. Hmm. So there is a link. But personally, I'm not linked. I don't take Kriya from them. I haven't. Okay. okay. Mm. So, um, I think the, the, this one, uh, I, sorry, I, I keep referring to things that people ask normally in the West. Yeah. And mm. I think it's good because that's our audience. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. There, 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 is, there is a word that fascinates people in the world, in the West. And that the word, word is Tantra. A word that tantra, fascinates tantra. people. Mm. Because mm -hmm. it, I think it fascinates people because I would say 99% of the time, some somehow they link it with sex, and mm -hmm. some people also try to link it with yoga, with asana. So the question is, mm -hmm. what is really tantra, and is there any link between tantra, yoga, sex? I mean, um, unfortunately, tantra has uh, acquired a very uh, notorious name nowadays because. <laughs> People think Tantra means night-long orgies where you have sex and your Kundalini is awakened. And then, and so, <laughs> so <laughs> I think if you night-long have orgies, your Kundalini will actually start going down. Anyway, so leave that aside. Now the word Tantra means, uh, in Sanskrit there are three words, Mantra, Yantra, and Tantra. Mantra is that which gives power to your man, which is mind. Mantra. Which 
teaches you how to operate your mind. Mind power. Now, yantra means the machine which can be used to bring this about. Even ordinary machines are called yantras in India. In India also. Ye kya yantra hai means what machine is this? So that is yantra. So you see all those diagrams, they are yantras. These diagrams are blueprints for the mind to go through so that it achieves a certain shape. Mm. And then Tantra. The third is Tantra. Tantra means how to use the mantra and the yantra to bring about a change in one's psyche. This is in Tantra. Mm. There are many important books on Tantra. Maha Nirvana Tantra is the most important, of course. What does the Tantra deal with? The Tantra deals with the subject which you have there in the serpent power on your shell. Mm. Mm. It's the other part of yoga which is not expressed in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, that there is an energy in us, which energy is also the libido, which is sexual energy. When it is in one particular state of development, then you enjoy sex and you have you create a human being and so on. It's only through sex that a new human being comes. The other day somebody said, can you give me the source of, uh, why am I here? I said, because your father and mother went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you were here. So that part of one's life <laughs> is libido. That means there is an energy in us which can create a completely new human being. It can also be used creatively for for artists and dancers and musicians. It's creative. Mm -hmm. Now, in Tantra, the Tantra Shastra believes that this energy is coiled and rests at the bottom of the spine of all human beings, male or female. Male, female or male, female, any being. It rests at the bottom of the spine. And that energy that rests there is called the Kundalini. And there is no snake there, but it is represented and symbolized by a snake, which is rolled up three and a half times and sleepy. Yeah. And the practices of yoga, mantra, yantra, and so on are meant to activate this energy which is sleeping and reverse its direction from instead of going down, which is normal, to go up. This practice, this particular uh, way of looking at life energy is called the Tantra. And the practices adopted for that are also known as Tantric practices. Mm -hmm. Now, there is some truth about sex connected with it because, you know, sex is also connected with the same energy. And for an ordinary human being, after food and drink and shelter, the most enjoyable thing is sex. Mm. Right? Ha. So what happens in sex? You have a climax. In the climax, if actually you cannot see at that time, but later on if you think, in the actual climax, it has another word, do you know? Order. In English? Order. 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 Mm. Mm. I was trying to see if you know it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you wanted me to say it. <laughs> exactly. So, when orgasm takes place, right, it is, although it is located at the bottom in the reproductive organs, it actually spreads to the whole body. And at that moment of ejaculation or orgasm, at least for a few seconds, you cannot even think. You don't know who you are. You know nothing. You only know bliss. Mm. So it's similar to Samadhi of the higher levels, where the meditator has forgotten that he even exists. There is only the meditation. Mm. And when this energy is made to travel on the spine to the higher centers, which are called chakras, such chakra nirupana, study of the chakras, then what happens, when this energy 
which is normally awakened during sex in the bottom at muladhara the last center gets awakened in the higher centers so there is something called a higher orgasm which is not to do with sex at all and this higher orgasm is a thousand times more powerful than the other so therefore when the yogi experiences it he has no interest in the other that's the reason now to being about this awakening several techniques are described tantra also goes by the definition bhogo yoga yate yoga through enjoyment now this has been misinterpreted by many people thinking that if you have sex then you can be a yogi not true mm-hmm. not true what it means is the same bliss that you enjoy while you have a physical orgasm much more than that can be done through the practice of yoga that's what it means mm-hmm. tantra okay mm-hmm. um, so somewhere along the line it has been misunderstood mm. so the or- actual orgasm and the actual meeting of the positive and the negative which is actually the meeting of the male and female ida and the pingala is a yogic process more than a physical process mm. physical mm. process serves as a good example because you know that there is an orgasm and this orgasm the yogi says is possible without that physical act in other centers of your body much more than this mm. this is why you have to prepare for years to experience that otherwise it's possible that one may go crazy mm. people have gone crazy even with enjoying sex then imagine this <laughs> <laughs> so, so i am a little bit crazy but it's okay um, i think uh, if the world we have is the result of a uh, thousand years of sanity it is good to be insane <laughs> yeah. anyway so this can happen but you have to practice and go very slowly before mm. you can be able to absorb the energies i get mm. people who come to me and say they went to such and such a person he taught me this practice i practice now something is happening in my head i don't know what to do it i said go to him why are you coming to me so in first is he doesn't need to teach you that you need to go slowly <laughs> step by step i get innumerable mm. emails like that mm. Mm. so that's mm. why you have to go at it slowly tantra mm. having said that i must also say even in the hatha pratipika and other yogic textbooks there are yogic techniques by which the sexual act is sublimated to spiritual now this is a very tricky uh, area people start trying to do it but they end up doing only sex not the yoga <laughs> because it's much more easier because mm. in in the yoga pradipika and other yoga textbooks i can't tell you exactly the names right now there are many there is a description of something called the vajraholi mudra mm. in vajraholi mudra what happens is the yogi learns to control the muscles of his sexual organs so that everything goes as per normal with a man and woman until the time the ejaculation is about to take place orgasm yogi by contracting his muscles is able to stop that and release the energy upwards now this is a very difficult it's not so easy because usually people who attempt that end up only going down they don't go up right i'm not saying it is good or bad i'm only yeah. saying so so therefore the tantra connected with yoga is called yoga tantra the tantra connected only with rituals and worship of the sri yantra and so on uh, that is not yoga tantra it's only tantra mm. yoga the the sir john udroff wrote this book on uh, the kundalini which is called the serpent power sat chakra nirupana now that whole text is actually satchakar nirbhana is a yoga tantra it's not either tantra or yoga it's a combination of both yoga tantra mm. 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 so yeah and if anybody wants now is curious to know about tantra real tantra not all this stupid things people say about tantra should read again john udroff's book 
because it is the best available in english translation mm. otherwise i would have said many other books called introduction to tantra mm. it's a beautiful book it really he said it properly and for your information sir john udroff was a, a, a justice a judge of the uh, calcutta high court and he was british mm. and then he 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 Rit, he resigned from his job and spent time studying the tantras in bengal and wrote this book sat chakra nirupana as well as introduction to the tantras and the kular nava tantra translated as uh, a garland of flowers or something like that yes mm. so anyone interested they are available in english you can get it in amazon should read it to have a good idea traditionally of what tantra actually means instead of falling into these traps hmm hmm good i'll search if there is a spanish translation available to to recommend to to the students yeah And so then the so sir go, go, going to the asana so could we say that in hatha yoga it's the, like the central practice is asanas uh, like no, asanas the true. ancient way or that's a misconception no 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 see e people have this uh, completely misunderstood uh, idea that hatha mm. yoga is physical yoga raj mm. yoga is it's not like that the hatha yoga pradipika written by swatma rama the entire philosophy and teachings of yoga is given hatha the asanas are only one part of it so then why is it called hatha yoga hatha yoga need not mean physical yoga only or asanas only hatha yoga comes from a syllable two syllables ha and tha ha is the sound in sanskrit for the sun plus and tha is the syllable for the word moon for moon which is minus cool plus hot minus cool so hatha yoga means the practice by which the ida and the pingala is brought under control mm. plus and the minus breaths mm. this is the meaning of hatha is not only yoga asanas so if you say i am a hatha yogi you were doing all the ashtanga yoga from yama niyama asana pranayama prati til samadhi that's all part of hatha yoga somewhere along the line people have changed only hatha yoga means only exercise raj yoga means upper development and so on however having done all the practice how if you want to go deeply only in the dhyana dharana samadhi last part meditation then there are raj yogic texts available for that now you see swami vivekananda wrote a commentary and translation of yoga sutras of patanjali hmm. and he collected it under the title raj yoga hmm. okay but if patanjali refers to asanas also in his yoga sutras then you cannot say that raj yoga does not have asanas hmm hmm you understand what i am trying yeah, to say yeah 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 so normally what has happened in practice in daily practice one who does only asanas and pranayam and is not interested in upper spiritual development people label him oh he is a hatha yogi but it's mm. not like really hatha mm. yoga includes everything mm. Mm. okay got it mm. sir uh, i still have a few questions from students do, do you have some more time i don't know what's your schedule what is our how much time do we have totally 45 minutes to 1 hour so how many 45 minutes over now so for 10 minutes we okay. can ask the, hmm. okay so the, the the first question is uh, one of our students unfortunately has gone through uh, losing a, a close dear one he has died and uh, i think this is a relevant question for everyone because everyone will go through this sooner or later it's not so specific for him so he he's really engaged in to, to trying to understand deep, more deeply yoga and he's wondering if yoga in any way could help people going through the grief process of accepting of the anger that you have of you know of, could yoga help in any way in in these cases i think so first you need to have a theoretical understanding 
which has to be understood that all things that are born will die. Mm. There is no thing that has remained forever. I know it's difficult to accept it when one's own somebody goes. I understand mm. that. But the fact remains that who, whatever is born in this earth or created, whatever you want to say, use, will have to end. Therefore, I am very confident that this coronavirus, COVID-19, also will die. It, it also has a lifespan. <laughs> we have to be careful till it goes. <laughs> that is all we can do. It will go, yeah. of course, because it's also created. It has to go. Yeah. You see, anything in this world, everything, great emperors have fallen. The ordinary farmer has fallen. Great lovers have died, separately yeah. or together, but they have died. Yeah. So, only thing is when a yogi dies, people say, oh, he became a samadhi, but he died. Act. No yogi has remained alive. Right. So, first you have to accept that. Anything created in this world will go. And also understand that I am grieving because I am missing something, not because that person is gone. My happiness is compromised, which is why I am grieving. Not because mm. that person is gone. However much romantically I would like to say, oh, that person is gone. But actually I am missing something. Mm. Therefore, the yogic teaching is that all the joys <clears throat> first accept that everything that begins has an end. And then they understand that all joy is actually in yourself, not in somebody else. Mm. Even when you are in contact with food, you eat you think, oh, apple is very tasty. Who is, does the apple enjoy or you are enjoying? You mm. are enjoying. Mm. Right? So, so, therefore, the teaching of yoga is if you go deep inside and see yourself in your true essence, you are the receptacle of all happiness and peace. So, having understood all the theory we discussed, you should say, okay, so... Permanent tranquility and peace is not possible by depending on anything in this world. And therefore, let me turn in and look at within and see. Mm. Long ago, there was a yogi in Jerusalem, Jesus the Christ. He said something very interesting. He said, lay treasures in your heart where thieves do not break in and steal. So look for that treasure. Nobody can break in. No highway mm. robber, no decoy, mm. nobody. Can. So... Mm. You must understand this. And you should also understand that because physically somebody has ceased to exist, it doesn't mean that person is out. There is an eternal part of every human being that exists. Where it is, how, that we do, but it is there. Mm. So you should only pray that that being, whatever has remained of that being, may it be happy. Mm. And if for that being to be happy, I have to be happy. Mm then do the practices of meditation by which you see the treasure in yourself. Mm. Thanks. Thanks. Then the, 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 there, is, there is one of our students that's saying that she, she got exposed to yoga teachings many years ago. She intellectually, under, at least up to some level, understands what they are talking about. She also experiences that whatever she looks outside is very impermanent, that whatever she seeks outside but she somehow cannot get into doing her practice. She's very busy, gets involved, she forgets. Then suddenly the teaching comes again and she, oh, she reminds us a little, and then again, and like that has gone years. So she's saying, is there something wrong? What's happened? Why, why mm -hmm. if I intellectually understand, I get carried away by my day to day and I don't get into it. I mean, is there something you can say? I can only say that she's still not ready. Mm. And the way she is going is a good way of going. Mm. In fact, it, she is doing okay because it's not a good idea to jump into it and then practice and then leave it. She is not mm. started, but she is still getting mature. Different people's maturity levels are different mm. in the spiritual field. Mm. Uh, so, at some point, she would certainly go back to it. Um, if there is... Uh, one thing which would really speed her up to go into it is when she suddenly discovers this is world is something happens by which I hope nothing happens by which she suddenly realizes that it is all fake 
and then I have to find the real. I hope nothing happens. Sometimes you see others going through it and understand. You don't have to. You don't have to put your finger into the fire to say that fire will burn. You see somebody else, you can understand. So one day, I think she she's quite intelligent. She'll understand. What she probably requires is a little bit of a push. Mm. Now for that, either I have to travel there or she has to come here. There's no other. <laughs> okay. Let's wait for the coronavirus to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's going to die. Okay, maybe yeah. another month or two. Yeah. 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 Then there the, are the students who have kids and they, they, who they have are what? really gay, who have children, you know, who, children. Are, who have children. And they, they, they are, you know, getting enthusiastic about yoga and, and they are wondering, is there any way this can be taught or transmitted to children, maybe 10 years old yes, or early yes. teenager? Because they think, why do we have to wait until you are 40, 50 years old to, to learn about this? I, mean, I think you should start early, but mm -hmm. start with simple asanas. Mm -hmm. Don't do so complicated thing. Start mm -hmm. with simple asanas. Uh, you have a chart which I gave you of asanas with only head and arms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, use I think that I have them. Yeah, mm -hmm. use the chart and start from the simple mm -hmm. asanas and get them into it. Mm -hmm. Once they start doing, they will really get interested in it. Mm -hmm. Don't go into meditation and all. Now, just do the asanas. Mm -hmm. Then do a little bit of pranayama. Mm -hmm. Mm. And if they say, when you are going to uh, exams, we become anxious, ask them before going, sit for two minutes and do the simple pranayama, which is breathing in and breathing out. Mm -hmm. Ujjayi is good for the children? Ujjayi is also good. Okay. But not, but don't do ujjayi with <laughs> sound like mm. that. Mm. No sound should come out mm. when you do ujjayi. It's only mm. deep breathing. See, I'm yeah. doing ujjayi now, you cannot hear any other sound. Mm. Yeah. It's not. Mm, mm, yeah. No. <laughs> Get what I'm Just so. a soft sound from the. It's not a sound, it's the air. Yeah. Yeah. So, Ujjayi yeah. is very good. Also, most people don't know how to breathe. So, it's good from young age, children learn to breathe so that their lung mm. capacity increases. Mm. Which is mm. first, you have to sit straight and take a deep breath, fill your chest. Then push the air down into the abdomen. Tell them that your tummy is not going to become big because of this. In fact, the muscles become stronger. Otherwise, ladies will think, oh, my tummy. They want it. Mm. So, first take a deep breath inside. Push down. Then pull the stomach in and exhale. In fact, when they exhale, they can also open their mouth and exhale. This is also good. And so while you do the... Yeah. Yes, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And if you are in a green place where there is no pollution, you can also one or two breaths take with the mouth open also. Yeah. You know, when you feel sleepy, the uh, you yawn. Yeah. Yawn. Why do you yawn? Because the uh, brain realizes that it is short of oxygen. Mm. Mm. It wants more oxygen. So, this is not enough. So, mm. <sighs> so when you did the pulling down to the to the abdomen of the air, you are holding. You inhale, you hold, then you down up, only, and then you only inhale, for right? half, only for half a, two seconds, not two, two seconds. Minutes. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Especially yeah. for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And the and the more. Fa uh, theoretical or philosophical aspects in a simplified way, is there any way to transmit to children? It's better to keep away from that. I mean, of, uh, you know, they're too young of, for that. that there is are things beyond the mind, the body. Is, is it too abstract for them? It's, it's, it's a little too early for them, but you can always mm -hmm. tell them to keep their mind open and say that what we learn is not everything. There is much more to learn. That much you can mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And the mind okay. has mind has much more capacity than we normally think mm -hmm. that you can okay. teach. Okay. Yeah. I think we so can I stop. Think I have... Yeah, yeah. 
Thanks a lot on behalf of all the students thank you, thank and on my behalf as well. Ah, my thank greetings you, to all the students. What do you say? Gracias or? Gracias. <laughs> gracias. Gracias. And what is the English translation of mercy? Mercy is gracias. It's a thank you, right? Merci in French, you mean? Yeah, it's gracias. Oh, it's yeah. French. It's Merci French. is French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Spanish is gracias. Gracias. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gracias. So gracias. Namaskar. See you soon. Namaskar. Bye.